You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, brothers and sisters, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Oh yes, please don't take my sunshine away. Let them all come on to hear the word of God with me because it's so much more fun to do it together on this August 13. August 13, we will be reading right away Nehemiah chapter 15. No, nope, wrong. Nehemiah chapter 5, picking up with verse 14. Nehemiah 5, 14. And... <clears throat> We probably will be with our, our beloved Miss Connie this morning because her children have blessed she and husband Doug with a trip to Hawaii. Hawaii! Mm. Isn't that grand and glorious? And because of the extreme time change between what we do and there, she might end up getting to watch it, but maybe not because they're going to be in a whirlwind of fun with the family. So we wish the whole Fote family well this morning <clears throat> as they begin this incredibly wonderful vacation. I pray that um, <clears throat> each one of you uh, will just say a prayer for yourself before we begin. I mean, this is what I'm going to say for myself. Father God, I'm asking you to send Holy Ghost in all his fullness, to use your word this morning to not only feed us and uplift us and show us direction and maybe even reveal some giftings, reveal some people or occasions that you would like us to attend to. But Lord, we want to praise you. We want to bless you. We want you to be able to smile down and say, they're reading my word again, because that's what it's all about. And then, Father God, you can just take it right on out wherever you want. You have that capability. You can have people that you want who are troubled, perhaps, and maybe today's message from your word is exactly what they need to hear. Please, Lord, let all of those people just even stumble across this site and let Holy Ghost minister to them. Amen? Amen. Please go see Kathy's wonderful graphics. Hallelujah. She has a wonderful sunshine picture there, a smiley face that will light up your day. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter 5, picking up with verse 14, and there is Miss Melissa right on schedule, bringing what you can just tap to go see all those graphics I just exclaimed to you. <clears throat> all right, moreover, Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 14, from the moment that I, Nehemiah, was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, we would say Judah, they say Judah, from the 20th year after the 32nd year of King Artaxerxes, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's provisions. Mm -hmm. Those kosher boys said, mm -mm -mm. don't give me that artery building fat and stuff. We didn't eat the governor's provisions. But the former governors who were before me laid burdens on the people and took from them bread and wine, besides 40 shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people. But I did not do so because of the fear of God. The fear of God, that's not how he treated them. Indeed, I also continued the work on this wall, and we did not buy any land. All my servants were gathered there for the work. They wanted to prove that to the people, didn't they? We aren't here to try to take you over and buy up your land. 
We're here to build this wall. <clears throat> and at my table were 150 Jews and rulers besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was prepared daily, <laughs> we're going to have to feed all these people, aren't we? Prepared daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also, fowl were prepared for me. Oh boy, pheasants, ducks, and once every 10 days, an abundance of all kinds of wine. Yet in spite of this, I did not demand the governor's provisions because the bondage was heavy on these people. Heavy on these people. Nehemiah had a heart to share. Nehemiah had a heart to have all that numbers of people. He could watch over and make sure everybody had something to eat, right? Remember me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. And we move right along to chapter 6 in Nehemiah 5. No, now it's Nehemiah 6. <clears throat> now it happened, here we go, when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors in the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. Oh, smooth, honey-coated words, right? With a deceitful heart. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? Good question. <clears throat> but they sent me this message four times. Four times. And I answered them in the same manner. And then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before. The fifth time, with an open letter in his hand, and in it was written, <clears throat> and I'm going to say this very big lie, it is reported among the nations, and Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall, that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. <clears throat> Big threat. And then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you say are being done but you invent them in your own heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, their hands will be weakened in the work and it will not be done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. And afterward I came to the house of Shimeiah, the son of Deliach, the son of Mehetabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, <clears throat> let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I? who would go into the temple to save his life. I will not go in. And then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. <clears throat> well, there's always a payola, isn't there? For this reason he was hired, 
that I should be afraid and act that way and sin so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat <clears throat> according to these their works and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. Oh boy, they worked hard, didn't they? 52 days and it was finished. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things that they were very disheartened in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was done by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came to them. For many in Judah were pledged to him. And here's the reason. Because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and his son, Yehohanan, had married the daughter of Meshalam, the son of Berachia. Now, I wish what, I knew what all that meant. <clears throat> if Scott arrives, he could tell us. Also, they reported his good deeds before me, and they reported my words to him. Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. And we move along to chapter 7. And then it was when the wall was built and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani, and Hananiah the leader of the citadel. For he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, do not let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. And while they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station and another in front of his own house. Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few, and the houses were not rebuilt. And then my God put it into my heart to gather the nobles, the rulers, and the people that they might be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return. And I found written in it, these are the people of the province who came back from the captivity and those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his city. And those who came with Zerubbabel were Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Misperet, Bigvi, Nehum, and Banach. The number of the men of the people of Israel, the sons of Perash, 2,172. The sons of Shepatiah, 372. The sons of Ara, 652. Isn't that amazing? Three times 52. The sons of Pahat Moab, of the sons of Yeshua and Joab, 2,818. The sons of Elam, 1,254. The sons of Zatu, 845. The sons of Zaki, 760. The sons of Benoi, 648. The sons of Bibi, 
628. The sons of Asgad, 2,322. The sons of Adonikam, 667. The sons of Bigve, 2,067. The sons of Adin, 655. The sons of Atur of Hezekiah, 98. The sons of Hashum, 328. The sons of Bize, 324. The sons of Harip, 112. The sons of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem, we would say Bethlehem, and Nepotah, <clears throat> 188. The men of Anatol, 128. And the men of Beit Asmavet, 42. The men of Kiria Yeriim, Sheparach, and Beriot, 743. The men of Rama and Giba, 621. The men of Michmas, 122. The men of Bethel and Ai, 123. The men of the other Nebo, 52. The sons of the other Elam, 1,254. The sons of Harim, 320. The sons of Jericho, 345. The sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. The sons of Senach, 3,930. The priests, here's the number, the sons of Yediah, of the house of Yeshua, 973. The sons of Immer, 1,052. The sons of Pashur, 1,247. The sons of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the sons of Yeshua of Kadmiel, and of the sons of Chodava, 74. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 148. Now oh, that's a good choir. The gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Eter, the sons of Talmon, the sons of Akub, the sons of Hetavata, the sons of Shobi, 138. And then we have a whole list of the Nethanim. And I'm just going to read the names. The sons of Ziha, Hashupa, Tabawat, Keros, Sei, Padon, Lebanah, Hagaba, Salmi, Hanan, Gedel, Gehar, Reaah, Resen, Nekoda, Gazam, Uza, Pasia, Besi, Meoim, Nephasim, Baruch, Hakapwa, Harher, Baslit, Mehedi, Harsha, Barkos, Sisera, Tama, Nessia, and Hatapa. Pardon me, you guys up there in heaven, if I butchered your name. And also, the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Zotai, Soparet, Merida, Yala, Dakon, Gedel, Shepatai, Hatil, um, the sons of Pokoret, of Zabim, Amon, all the Nephilim, and the sons of Solomon's servants were 392. And these were the ones who came from Tel Malach, Tel Harsha, Sherub, Adan, and Immer. But there was a problem. They could not identify their father's house nor their lineage, whether they were of Israel, the sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nekoda, 642 of them, and of the priests, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Kos, the sons of Barzillai, 
who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gadiite and was called by their name. These sought their listing among those who were registered by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore, <clears throat> they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Urim and the Thummim. <clears throat> and that is quite a study of how they did that. It was with like with lights and so forth. Altogether, the whole assembly was 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 245 men and women singers. Oh, I'd have loved to be in that number. Their horses were 736, their mules 245, their camels 435, and donkeys 6,720. Oh, those were the burden bearers, weren't they? <clears throat> and some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 basins, and 530 priestly garments. Some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the treasury of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minas. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minas, and 67 priestly garments. Wow! Giving. Generous people. Wanting to make sure that everything in the temple was set up the way Moshe had originally received from the Lord. Right? Giving back. Isn't it wonderful they had those things? So the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the Nethanim, and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? All that they had to fight and work hard to accomplish. And they did it. <clears throat> okay, we will leave off of there for today until tomorrow, Lord willing. We will move on to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. Woo, big head. But love edifies. Love builds up not puffs up. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God, but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one, one, one God, the Father, of whom all, who are all things, one God, creating all things, and we for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Oh, 
isn't it the most wonderful life? When you think back your old life, selfish, always, it's the other guy's fault, so-and-so hurt me, just dragging misery on year after year. But look at here, we can live in Christ. We are part of his body. We are members of his body. If you have repented and accepted him, asked him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, please, if you haven't done that, please do that today. You don't know the words? You don't have to have perfect words. You just pour out your heart to him any words you want. Just be honest. Tell him the things that have hurt you, the things you know you've done wrong. Ask him to forgive you and wash it all away with his blood and become born again, new, brand new, new plan from God instead of your raggy old plan that's already worn out and miserable. Hallelujah. Through whom are all things and through whom we live. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some with consciousness of the idol, until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. When your conscience is allowed to be defiled, you no longer see clearly right from wrong, according to God. And you just follow your own selfish, wicked, evil ways right down to the pit of hell if you don't get turned around. You want to burn forever? Of course you don't. Neither do I. I want to go to heaven. I want to be with him and all the other saints that have gone before us. Just think, Moses and Abraham and Mary and, I mean, list them all. They'll be there and we'll get to know them personally. He's preparing a great banquet. There's a chair with your name on it. It's well worth it to live in and for the Lord Jesus Christ. Please take the offer from him seriously because your life depends upon it. Okay? So, they were eating these things to an idols, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But food does not commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. It doesn't have anything to do with eating, really, except these people were purposely eating toward idols. But beware lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? They probably will. And because of your knowledge... Shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? Oh, we, we can't be responsible for that. But when you thus sin against the brethren and you wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble. I will never again eat meat lest I make my brother stumble. Now just think that one through. 
That'll take you away from your own selfish appetites. And we move right along to Psalm 33. Psalm 33, rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Ah, I wish I could play any instrument with strings. Sing to him a new song. Well, I can do that, and so can you. So can you. Just make it up. It's all beautiful to the Lord. Yes, yeah, sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Oh, isn't that true? He spoke, and it was. It was created. Let there be light, he said. And there was, and we have it yet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. Just picture that. I, I, I had a lot of fun picturing that. Like his two hands just heaping up the water. He did, didn't he? He made a wall. And the children of Israel walk through on dry land. Oh, he can do anything. He can do anything. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Oh, won't that be a glorious day? We have all these people cussing and swearing, using his name. You notice they never use, they never news, use uh, idol names. They never say, oh, Mohammed, or any other name you want to put in there. No, it's always Jesus Christ gets sworn, isn't it? God is used with the word damn, isn't it? Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsels of the Lord stands forever. Nobody can take his counsel away. He's in charge of it. He's the boss. He's the Lord. And he loves you. And he wants the very best for you. The plans of his heart to all generations. So that includes you and me today. All generations. We were not excluded, we are included in the family of God, the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, it's worth it, don't miss it. Repent today. Don't be afraid of that word. Repent just means get down with a sincere heart and hopefully some tears of regret and just, oh God, I did this. Oh God, you know, I was the reason that anything that you know you did and that troubles you, troubles your conscience, give it to the Lord. He can wash it away 
and you will no longer be tormented by the devil. Oh, children of God, listen to the word. Listen to his word. You can be fed. He will keep you walking straight. And you will be filled with joy. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. The plans of his heart to all generations. And you know, I used to listen to, to a wonderful man. His name was Zola Levitt. He was from the Levite heritage. And my first trip to Israel in 1999, I went with Zola Levitt because I just loved him. I'd been watching his TV program for a long time. And he always ended his program every day with Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim. And that was the first that I learned that that was how they said it, Yerushalayim. Sha'alu means pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And you know you and I do that every day. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we wrap up today's awesome reading with Proverbs 21, verses 8 through 10. Proverbs 21, 8 through 10. The way of a guilty man is perverse. Oh, we're watching a lot of those run around today, aren't we? Who think they are in charge? And we just read the... the the Lord said the plans of men are nothing. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. The way of a guilty man is perverse. You will see that what he says, what he does, it's all garbage. But as for the pure, his work is right. When you're walking along with the Lord, he will cause you to do right, to say right, to be filled with joy, to give out. Oh, here's a goodie. Better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. All right, ladies, let's look at our own selves. Are we contentious? Do we add to the argument rather than speak words of peace or just shut our mouths, period? Sometimes it's a very good thing to just shut your mouth. Okay? Let's not be contentious women. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. And you know, the eyes, the Word of God says the eyes mirror the soul. You can look at somebody's eyes right away and you can say, Whoa, boy, that man has problems. Ooh, that lady is sad. Sadness coming out of her eyes. Oh, this, this lady over here. Oh, I'd really like to know her. Look look at how her eyes twinkle and the joy of the Lord is there. Your eyes mirror your soul. And people see it. People see it. Let's look in the mirror and see what shape our eyes are in. Do they look sad? Are they angry? Mm. Are they joyful? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We can go on. If you want joy, you must dance for it. If you want joy, you can make it up even. Yes, have yourself a wonderful time singing unto the Lord. Well, that's it for today. 
my precious brothers and sisters in Christ, let us close in prayer. And please bring your own prayers, okay? Bring your own prayers. Father God, we are so grateful for your word. Oh, oh my, oh my. Your word is wonderful. It is powerful. It is delicious. It leads. It guides. It convicts. It washes away our sins, knowing about your blood, knowing about your sacrifice on the cross just for us. We can be delivered now from things that have troubled us for years. Give it to Jesus and ask him, please, Lord, Please, Lord, I give this to you. It, it haunts me. I repeat it. It's like Paul said, these things that I don't want to do, I do. And these things that I should do, I don't. Lord, we have those times. Help us. Holy Spirit, please come help us. Help every single person praying and hearing and listening today. Help. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. Convict and then lead and guide. You are wonderful, wonderful. We bless you. We, we bless you because you have blessed us. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem, this troubled spot that the enemy wants. We hold up and we pray, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem this day. Let peace rule and reign, Lord, everywhere, everywhere. Let peace be over the people. Lord, send massive armies of angels to all the borders where these enemy evil hearts keep throwing rockets. And Father God, let that iron dome catch every one of them. Every one of them. Don't let them have any glory in one of them falling and tearing up your land or killing or harming your people. Please, Lord. I please, I pray, <clears throat> I pray, precious Jesus. I pray for those returning. You are bringing your people home. Please, Lord Jesus, show them your plan. Show them where you want them to live and, and what they can do to make a living and how they can fit in to a town, to a city, whatever. Building up your kingdom once again on your precious holy soil. Oh, hallelujah to the lamb. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I say that in the shower every morning and then I marvel at those words. Slain before the foundation of the world? Yeah, hidden mysteries of the Lord, right? Father God, We'd ask you would bless your people abundantly today. Abundantly. Let there be joy. Let there be joy in the markets, in the homes, in the synagogues, in the churches. Let there be joy. Let there be the fear of you everywhere. A godly, holy fear of you. And let the enemy be scared to pieces of you. Convicting them. Drawing them unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we hold up the Knesset. We hold up the ruling bodies everywhere, every town. And we'd ask, Lord, that your precious plan would unfold and be put in place. And then we turn to America. Ah, oh, yes, this wonderful, wonderful country 
that it was given and born by you, for you, it's still yours. America is God's. Let's just say it. Because there's a lot of evil people think that it's theirs. And it isn't. Let, let me just break the news to you. It, it isn't yours, okay? You evil, evil plot planning selling out of America. You are facing a severe judgment. I pray that you come to the Lord. So, Father God, I'd ask that you would confuse the enemy's plans today. Confuse the plans. Let them turn on one another. Let them just destroy themselves. They do a very good job of that. Let them be jealous of each other, proud. and Let them be in conditions to fail that they might have the greatest opportunity they've ever had to humble themselves and come to you. Precious God, we hold up America and we say, Lord, save her. You have saved her many times. You save on a daily, by minute, by minute basis. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, there are many people that need healing today. They are here and they need healing. I have a very precious sister named Kim, and there needs to be a healing of her nose, and there's going to be an operation in 10 days. Lord, you could heal that yourself, and then we'll just cancel the operation. But Lord, I'm asking that your touch be upon my, my precious sister today. Father God, we have many people to lift up to you. And I'd ask, precious God, that you would be with them. I'd ask that you'd be with our, our sweet sister Maria as she takes care of our sister Connie's precious lab. Maya, help her, Lord. That's a big dog. <laughs> Help her in hanging onto that leash. Help her in all that needs to happen. Lord, fill her so she's not lonely while Connie and Doug and the family have themselves a wonderful, wonderful time. We thank you, Lord, for our sister. We miss her. We miss her name down, and but she'll be back. She'll be back. Father, please raise up with healing all those who need healing, with deliverance for all those who need deliverance until every demonic spirit and force is gone in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Lord, let joy arise. Let singing and praising and dancing arise and let your people find out that's how they get out of those spirits. Begin to sing and praise you, and those spirits must leave. They can't stand to hear it. Oh, hallelujah, there's power in praise. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the, put in anything, name in the ways of the Lord. There is power power, wonder-working power in the precious name of the Lord. Yes. And to all of that, Lord, we say amen. Have a wonderful day in Christ. I love you all so much. He loves you with a heavenly, perfect love. Bye-bye.